Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to answer multiple choice questions. Multiple choice questions appear regularly in both the academic and general reading tests. They're fairly simple to complete, but it's easy to get tricked into picking the wrong answer. The information and strategy in this video will help you to avoid common errors and to gain high marks. They'll also save you time in your test. The video includes an explanation of this question type, the skills needed, key tips, a proven strategy and step-by-step -step instructions on how to answer a question from a real test paper. The aim of this type of question is to test if you can understand the main idea of each paragraph, scan for specific information and use detailed reading to differentiate between several possible answers. You'll be asked to read the first half of a sentence, a statement or a question about the text, then choose the most appropriate sentence ending, response or answer from a choice of a number of options, usually four. Only one is correct, although several could appear to be the right one on first reading, so be careful. Here's an example of how the instructions and questions will be set out. It's part of a question taken from a past test paper. Pause the video if you want to spend a few moments studying it. Now for some important tips. Tip 1. Read the questions first. If you do this, you'll know what you're looking for when you read the text, which will save you loads of time. Tip 2. The answers will be in order in the text. It's very helpful to know this as it makes it easier to find them. So, if you found answer 1 in paragraph 1 and answer 2 in paragraph 3, you'll know that answer 3 won't be too much further on in the text. Tip 3. Read in detail. For some question types, you'll be mostly skimming and scanning the text for the answers. You'll need these skills here too, but with multiple choice questions, the detail is very important. Tip 4. Watch out for distractors. Be aware that the test setters love to include distractors in the answer options to try and catch you out. A prime example is qualifying words such as every, all, most or a few. They're only small words but they can completely change the meaning of a sentence. For example, compare these two sentences. Everyone who ate the prawn sandwiches at the party was ill. Most people who ate the prawn sandwiches at the party were ill. Tip 5. Don't leave any blank answers. If you really can't decide which answer is right, then guess. There's at least a chance that you'll guess correctly and get the mark. If you don't put an answer, the question will of course be marked wrong by the examiner. It's also useful to know the types of incorrect answers that might be included. Be alert for answers that give almost correct information, watch out for those distractors, the opposite information, it's very easy to get fooled by these. Information that's included in the same paragraph as the true answer, but not relevant to the question. And information related to the question, which is not included in the text. We're now ready to look at my step-by-step -step strategy. I'll show you how to apply this when we work through the practice question, but first you need to understand it. Start by carefully reading the questions. Don't worry if there are words you don't understand. If they appear in the text, you may be able to work them out in context. Alternatively, synonyms that you do understand may have been used. If unfamiliar words appear in incorrect answer options, they don't matter so much, although you need to make an educated guess at them in order to eliminate the answer. After reading the questions, skim read the text. On this first reading, you're aiming to get just the general meaning. Then return to the questions and underline key words in them. 
These will help you find the location of the correct answer in the text. I've underlined them in question 1 in the slide as an example. In the text, synonyms will almost certainly be used for some of them, so think about what these might be as you pick out the keywords. Your other task, while looking at the answer options, is to try and work out the difference in meaning between them. Two may be very similar. Don't spend too much time on this, but doing it will save you precious minutes in the next step. From your general understanding of the text, you may be able to make a reasonable prediction of the right answer to some of the questions. Put a mark next to your prediction in pencil. You may not be right, but this will help you to narrow down the options. Now reread the text a paragraph at a time, particularly scanning for the key words you identified and likely synonyms. Remember that the answers will be in order, so you can expect the first one to be in paragraphs 1 or 2. Once you've located the section of text containing the answer, read in detail to fully understand it. Now go back and read the answer options again. Usually one or two options will clearly be wrong. Cross them out to eliminate them once you're sure they're incorrect. Continue to study the detail in the remaining answers until you've identified the right one. If one answer jumps out at you as obviously correct, double check it in case the examiner has succeeded in tricking you with qualifying words or another sneaky tactic. It's probably worth going through the process of eliminating the other answers before finally deciding, just to be sure. It's common to end up with two very similar answer options that it's difficult to decide between. When this happens, you need to study them in even more detail to identify the difference. First, write them out one under the other, unless they already appear like this on the sheet. Here are a couple of tactics you can use to compare them. Paraphrase each one in your own words. Identify distractors, such as qualifying words, that give them different meanings. And compare keywords and synonyms between them, and with the question. Time will always be against you. If you get really stuck with an answer, you'll need to take an educated guess, so you at least write something on the answer sheet. If you're down to two possible answers, then you have a 50% chance of picking the correct one. Do this and keep moving on through the test. The more you practice your general reading skills and this strategy, the quicker you'll get and the easier they'll become. We're now ready to work on our sample question. It comes from a real IELTS reading test paper and can be found on the official IELTS website. Here are the instructions and sentences. The next two slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space. However, I put a link to a PDF of the question and the text in the notes below this video that you can download to make it easier to work on. Here's the text. This passage is just part of the full text used in the exam. In the real test, a longer version appeared and it had several different types of questions set on it. Remember that we need to do some work on the sentences before reading this text. Now I'll show you step by step how I answer this question. First, I read each of the sentences and their four possible endings to get a general idea of the information they contain. Next, I skim read the text, again to get the general meaning. I then go to question 1 and underline key words in it. I notice that three of the options have the keyword pay in them, so scan for this first. Since the answers will be in order in the text, I expect this first answer to be fairly near the beginning of the passage, so concentrate on paragraph 1 to start with. Pay appears twice. I highlight it. I'm pretty sure that the answer will be in this paragraph, so now scan for the other keywords I've selected, which are abolishing, avoiding, increasing and equipping, or obvious synonyms of them. 
I don't immediately spot any, so I read in detail to try and find the information I need, paying particular attention to the sentences in the text with the word pay in them. I identify a sentence that looks promising. It contains the words take away, which are a synonym of abolish, the key word I've underlined in option A. The sentence reads, Take away seniority-based pay scales and older workers may become a much more attractive employment proposition. I look at question 1 again and check if the information in the text and answer option A match. They do seem to. I reread and evaluate the other option answers. B and C are definitely not a match with the text. I briefly consider D as it's a possible match to the last sentence in the paragraph, which reads, So retaining the services of older workers may mean employing them in different ways. However, I decide that equipping older workers with new skills is not the same as employing them in different ways. So the correct answer must be option A. I move on to question 2 and scan for skill team the company mentioned in the sentence, starting from the location of the last answer. It appears twice in the second paragraph, so this is where the answer will be. There are no obvious keywords to scan for in the four option sentence endings, so my strategy this time is to carefully read the options and try to understand the information in each, and also to underline the key word or phrase in each that gives the key information that I need to try and match with the text. I then read paragraph 2 in detail, looking out for matching ideas. I quickly discount options A, B and D, as there's no information to support any of these statements. The answer must therefore be C. The matching information for option C is hidden in paraphrasing but can be found in the final phrase of the paragraph, which reads, allowing it to retain access to some of the intellectual capital it would otherwise have lost. The synonym of expertise used in the text is intellectual capital. It's quite likely that you won't know this, but you'll still be able to select the correct answer simply by eliminating the rest as clearly incorrect. Now for question three. I scan for bridge jobs. Again, since the answer will come in order in the text, I scan from the location of the last answer. Bridge jobs appears three times in paragraph three, so this is where the answer will be. As with the previous question, I carefully read the options and try to understand the information in each of them. I also underline the word or phrase in each that gives the key information that I need to try and match with the text. I then read paragraph 3 in detail, looking out for matching ideas. I spot United States in the text, so read that sentence again to check if the information matches option C, which also has United States in it. The text states that a study was carried out in United States, while option C says that bridge jobs originated there. The information does not match, so I discount option C. Also, there's no information in the paragraph about how much people are paid to do bridge jobs, so I cross through option B as well. I can now see that the answer must be in the last two sentences of the paragraph. I've already discounted the second sentence about the study in the United States, and the first sentence just explains what a bridge job is. I reread the remaining options A and D, then carefully read the last two sentences of the paragraph. They mention two types of workers who generally continue working, the best paid and the worst paid. There's no mention of people in middle salary ranges, so option C is not correct. That just leaves me with option D. Whilst the information in this statement is paraphrased, it clearly matches the text, so is the right answer. As you can see, 
Finding the correct match is often the process of eliminating the other options. I move on to the final question. I scan for David's story. It's always good to have a name to scan for, as it will be easy to find. I find it in the last paragraph. As before, I carefully read the options and underline the key word or phrase that highlights ideas I need to look for in the text. I then read the text in detail. This is one of those questions where it's easy to get caught out, as there's information in the paragraph relating to several of the possible answers, especially to self-employment and owning a business. I need to make sure that I focus only on what David Storey's study found out, which is that in Britain, 70% of businesses started by people over 55 survived, compared with an overall national average of only 19%. I reread the options one by one to see which is the best fit. It's option B. Older people are good at running their own business. There's some interpretation needed here, but this is the only option to match the information in the sentence. The answer is 4B. And that's the whole question completed. I hope you found these instructions helpful. Now use what you've learnt to practice answering other multiple choice questions, and you'll soon become good at them. There's lots more help with the test, including strategies for answering the other types of reading questions, on my website ieltsjackie.com and in my other videos. There's a link to the website in the notes below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.